Hello class, this is your topic 2.4. We are going to study about geobotanical survey method and biogeochemical method. Before that, we will try to understand the common principle between these two uh, of these two techniques and some geobotanical indicators. The principle behind geobotanical survey and biogeochemical survey is that the roots of plants, they act as sampling mechanism for the aqueous solution that are present in the soil. Okay? This aqu aqueous solution contains inorganic salts. The organic salts, they are accumulated in the terminal parts of the plant or they bring changes in the growth habit of the plant which results in changes in morphology and ecology. Okay? So we have two kind of samples which are provided by the plants. One where there is accumulation of elements in the terminal parts for biogeochemical survey and the other where we can directly look at the plant, their morphology and their ecology in the geobotanical survey. Okay, But we have to understand that this accumulation or any change in morphology which will occur in the plant will be because of a delicate balance between the process of transpiration and the absorption of these elements by roots. So the accumulation of element or the changes in morphology of the plant because of these inorganic salts will not necessarily reflect the inorganic salt composition of the soil but rather it reflects the balance between these two processes of transpiration and absorption by roots. But then we'll look at which of the elements in the soil are actually present, available to the plant. Okay, so there are three classes. So those elements which are readily available for the plants or the for or for the roots, they are referred to as nutrients. Okay. So these are the ions which are dissolved in soil moisture. Other, the ions they are absorbed on the surface of clay minerals. But there are also other ions which are tightly bounded in the lattice structures of the stable soil particles, which are not readily available to the plants. So how this availability of element is determined? There are two methods. First, we take a soil, a soil sample, it is treated with certain chemical reagents. So which of the elements, they come out into the solution after treating with reagent, after treating the soil with a reagent, those elements, they are available to the plant. Or we grow a plant in a soil and we then chemically analyze the plant itself, which, the, which of the elements the plant has taken. Okay. Those elements are the elements in the soil which are available to the plant. So availability in this context can be considered as mobility. Okay? But here this mobility is respect, with respect to plant activity. We have already understood, we have already learned what is mobility. But so in context of plant activity, which of the elements are taken up by the plant, this mobility is referred to as availability of availability of those elements or inorganic salts or you can just say ions. Then what is plant nutrition? Now till now we know the roots they take those elements which are readily available. But the roots they have also the capacity to mobilize even those elements which are firmly bounded in the classic soil particles of the minerals that is the decayed minerals. Now how do they do that? Now if we look at the area surrounding the roots, they are highly acidic. Why? Because there is hydrolysis of carbon dioxide which is escaping from the roots. So with carbon dioxide and hydrolysis, it results in carbonic acid. So we have abundance of H positive ions. So cation exchange reactions then are set up between the roots and the clay minerals. So hydrogen ions, they replace the cations from the clay particles. These cations then become free and they diffuse to the root 
through the soil moisture to the roots where they again exchange with the hydrogen ion and this hydrogen ion release is again used for replacing the metal ion in the clay particle so this process keeps on continuing so by this process plants not only sample the ions which are readily available but also those ions which are tightly bounded in the plastic soil particle which are the silicate minerals okay so now we know the plants they can take elements from the uh, they can take elements from the soil which are dissolved in the soil moisture or even which are tightly bounded in the lattice structure but what the plants do the plants they can selectively control the movement of certain organic constituents right why they do because for for plants certain elements they act they are very beneficial they are the act of nutrition for the plant but other they are toxic because they create they cause disease so those elements which are readily admit, admitted by the plants they are nutrition element but those elements which which generate toxic symptoms these elements are impeded and they are immobilized within the roots itself for example we have lead okay the lead uranium and vanadium these are toxic for the plant and these elements that they, they are precipitated in the roots itself so we have we are seeing what the plants they are taking up certain elements but for other elements what the plants they are doing they are immobilizing them within the roots by precipitation okay why because they don't want these elements to reach the growth center that is the leaf the fruits okay because the, these would create diseases so the plants what they do they impede or impede and immobilize these elements and precipitate them in the roots but if these toxic elements in the soil is too large what would happen so there will be enough precipitation in the roots that would hinder the uptake of elements which are rather more beneficial also so overall they would be hindering of the growth if the toxic element are precipitated in large number in the roots so the concentration of element in plant only reflects the nutritional need and not the amount available in the soil but if the toxic element if they are detected in the upper parts of the plant it means there are there is enough amount of these toxic elements present in the soil that they have reached the upper part of the plant so if we look or if we analyze the ashes of these plants in the ashes the concentration of these toxic elements would be lower than the soil but this this whole thing this whole criteria shows that the presence of these toxic element still lower than the amount in the soil is a reflection is a reflection of the composition of the soil moisture than the then nutritional element because nutritional element would reflect the nutritional needs only it is the toxic element which would reflect the composition of the soil moisture now each plant has its own nutritive requirement so under same condition different plants under different under same nutritional con, uh, solution will exhibit different concentration so these element that is nitrogen potassium phosphorus sulfur calcium magnesium these are the elements that the plants need the plants also need these elements that is zinc copper iron molybdenum and manganese and boron so if the soil is def is deficient in these elements plants will be unhealthy or if they are above the critical level the plants again 
will not be healthy because these elements will interfere with the metabolism of plants and they will have an overall toxic effect. Example is the boron. Now boron is beneficial for plant if it is in a certain concentration but if it exceeds that concentration then the boron what it does it interferes with the metabolism of plant and has an overall toxic effect okay in next lecture we will talk about geobotanical indicators we'll look at some geobotanical indicators for uh, groundwater for hydrocarbons and then ores okay